When it comes to hearing God's voice and discovering God's purposes for us, we should only worry about the next faithful step that God has given us to take and not worry about steps two or three or 10 or even the final outcome until God has revealed the next step to take. So we are in the midst of a sermon series and book study following the book On Purpose, Finding God's Voice in Your Passion. And so we've been working on how do we listen for God's voice, especially when there are obstacles in the way, such as distractions in our lives or having different priorities or the difficult one of not really wanting to hear the hard truths God might have to tell us so we don't listen or tune our ears to God as much, um, as well as a number of other things that get in the way of God's voice. And this week, um, we are going to explore some practical steps that we can take to better hear God's voice in our personal lives, but also together as a church community. As I was preparing the sermon this week, I was reminded of uh, one of my favorite movies. We watch a lot of Disney movies in my household, even before I had kids. I love Disney movies. Um, And the one that came to mind when thinking about how we hear the direction God is calling us was the movie Frozen 2. So all you parents and grandparents are probably sick of Frozen and Elsa by now. Um, My child actually doesn't like Frozen, so I didn't get inundated with let it go, let it go, let it go. Um, So I still like it. (laughs) But in the sequel to the first movie in Frozen 2, Um, Elsa, who is a snow queen, she has powers to turn things into ice and she's kind of struggling with her powers because they're very powerful um, and that's making some folks be afraid of her. But also she is kind of wrestling with why was I given these powers and where am I being called to lead my community? And so one day, Queen Elsa hears a voice calling her, and she decides to follow it. And her younger sister, Anna, and her friends go with her so that she's not on this journey alone off into the wild in the frozen north. And at one point, the voice that Elsa hears takes her into some very challenging territory. And Elsa decides that she needs to go on this path alone because she is the one that heard the voice. It's for her. And she doesn't want her sister or her friends to get hurt or to get into any trouble. So she leaves them in a place of safety and she forges ahead on her own. Unfortunately, although um, Anna, her sister, and her lovable snowman friend, Olaf, are safe, while that happens and Elsa forges ahead, she gets so far ahead um, into the challenging territory that she literally freezes and is frozen like a statue, like an ice statue. And Anna learns of this news that her sister is frozen and she is devastated and she's overwhelmed and she is left questioning in her grief, what do I do now? What is the next step? Because the problem for Anna is way too big and impossible and taking any step forward, knowing what direction, how do you unfreeze your sister who happens to have magic powers? She doesn't know what to do. And she's just devastated in her grief and frozen in what decision to make next. Have you ever felt that way? That some problem or situation is just so big that you freeze because you don't know how you can possibly get from point A to point B. Have you ever felt that about the church? I certainly have. 
Because when faced with an overwhelming, seemingly insurmountable problem, it can be easy to lose sight of God's voice. It can be easy to forget what our purpose is, both as individuals, but also as a church together. Because we don't know how to, we can see point A, and maybe we can see point B, sometimes we can't, but then there's all the steps and the space to get there. And how is that possibly all going to come together? We had the same problem um, in this church a few months ago when we found out that our food pantry directors were leaving. Um, in, in, we knew that they were leaving sometime in May. We found this out in December, January. And we said, this amazing program that feeds the community that has been part of our church for a long time and people rely on this service. This is like who we are and what we do. What are we gonna do? Who is going to fill those shoes? Especially the way that it kind of turned into almost a full-time volunteer job. How would we possibly get from point A to point B? And even last week, we had a meeting after church, our all church meeting, where we presented the budget. And if you read clearly, you will notice that there is a $50,000 deficit for our budget this year. And we've already made as many cuts as we can possibly think of. People are giving, thank you for giving, our income is great. We have renters. We share the space with some amazing community organizations. We're doing the work of the food pantry. We're doing God's work and what God's calling to do. And yet that 50 in the red is overwhelming and scary. And the reality is that just like in our personal lives, the same for the church, the expenses are just going up and up and up. So it's not that we're doing anything wrong, but it's like everything is against us and it's overwhelming. And we think to ourselves, how are we possibly going to get there? Utilities have increased. It's just the reality of the situation. And then what about the church, the capital C church in general, the global church, an unknown future. What does it mean to be and do church now as we are experiencing, especially in the United States, a decline in church? These are all huge problems. One on its own is a huge problem to solve. And they won't be solved overnight as much as we can pray and wish and hope that they will. And we don't have the answers, the easy answers. And so we are left feeling, at least I do, frozen sometimes. Like Anna is, definitely, literally like Elsa is, not knowing what to do next. So how do we move forward as people of faith, as the church, with where God is calling us to? And what do we do to gain clarity around the direction we should go, the steps we should take to live out our call as individuals and as a church, to live out our purpose? Well, one of the things that the author, Magri de Vega, in his book suggests um, is to take things one step at a time. Or as my mother-in-law often likes to say, one bite of the elephant at a time. Or when I was vegetarian, one bite of elephant salad at a time. <laughs> he writes, take things one step at a time and pay attention to the in-between moments. He goes on to say, when it comes to hearing God's voice and discovering God's purposes for us, we should only worry about the next faithful step, 
that God has given us to take and not worry about steps two or three or 10 or even the final outcome until God has revealed the next step to take. This is what it means to lean not on our own understanding. We take the next step in God's pace, in God's time. We also find this bit of wisdom in our scripture reading today from Proverbs, especially the last few verses where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and God will make straight your paths. The book of Proverbs is a gem of one-liners in the Hebrew scripture, and it's part of a greater collection of wisdom literature, along with Psalms and the book of Job and others. It provides human insight with real human problems of what is going on in the world then, and we can relate to the bigger themes even now. When I was in high, I think when I was in high school, my mom, my parents gifted me, it might have even been a graduation gift, um, a pewter bracelet that had this Bible verse on it. In all thy ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your paths. And whenever I was unsure of what to do next, what step to take, what decision to make, I would remember those words around my wrist that as long as I trusted in God and did what was faithful and loving, God would guide me down the right path for my life. Now, of course, this insight from Proverbs doesn't mean we don't have any agency or responsibility or accountability, and that if we let go and let God, that God will just do everything for us and take care of it, so what, we don't even have to do anything because we still have something to do. We have to take that next faithful step. But it does mean that God will be with us as we take that next step, taking care of the bigger picture while we focus on doing the next right thing. So back to our friends, Anna and Elsa. When Anna discovers that her sister is literally frozen, she is overcome with grief, which metaphorically freezes her in knowing what to do next. How should she help her sister? What is the point of life without her sister? How is she going to rule a kingdom without her sister? What is she going to do? And she ends up singing a song. After all, it is a Disney movie. Um, and I just want to share the lyrics of this song with you. The song is called The Next Right Thing. I've seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold. This is empty. This is numb. The life I knew is over. The lights are out. Hello, darkness. I'm ready to succumb. I follow you around, I always have, but you've gone to a place I cannot find. The grief has a gravity, it pulls me down. But a tiny voice whispers in my mind, you are lost, hope is gone, but you must go on and do the next right thing. Can there be a day beyond this night? I don't know anymore what is true. I can't find my direction. I'm all alone. The only star that guided me was you. How to rise from the floor when it's not you I'm rising for. Just do the next right thing. Take a step, step again. It is all that I came to do, the next right thing. I won't look too far ahead, it's too much for me to take, but break it down to this next breath, this next step, 
This next choice is one that I can make. So I'll walk through this night, stumbling blindly toward the light, and do the next right thing. And with the dawn, what comes then? When it's clear that everything will never be the same again, then I'll make the choice to hear that voice and do the next right thing. Friends, the church, the capital C church, our church, is standing on a threshold right now. It's like we're standing on a door space, that's the threshold of a door, and we can take a step out, but we don't know what's out there. So we could just go back safely into our doors where we know how to do church and how to be church like we always have. But if we don't go out into the threshold, what about all the other people of God that haven't experienced church yet? and will experience church and community and God, because God is moving out there, whether the church is with God or not. God is moving and doing things and loving people and suffering with people. And if we want to make that connection and be where God is pulling us, we have to step beyond the threshold. But going beyond that is scary because we can't see the steps to get there all the time. But we remember through our wisdom literature of Proverbs, through other people of faith, through the pushing and pulling of the Holy Spirit, that all we need to do is to take the next faithful step. While this existential crisis of church decline is happening all around us, and while we don't know yet how we're going to meet our budget this year, and while the postponed General Conference of the United Methodist Church starts this week and is beginning to meet to figure out how to move forward as a whole denomination, and, 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 all the other scary, big, overwhelming things are happening in the world, while all of that is going on, God is with us. God is still calling us to embody God's love here and now in our community, in the midst of the overwhelm. Because when we're overwhelmed. I can't even imagine what other people also might be overwhelmed with that haven't found a connection with purpose or with loving, supportive community like the church can be in its best ways, what on its best day. And so we have an opportunity to take that step off the threshold. We might not know what the next two, three, or ten steps are, but we can figure out what the next step is and take that. And once we've done that, take the next step after that and keep going. And when we do, we will get there. It might not be in our time or on our plans, but we have God guiding our paths as Proverbs reminds us. We can listen to God's voice and do the next faithful and right thing. That's what we did when we had the food pantry crisis of not knowing where we were possibly going to find another full-time director. We couldn't just magically make one appear as much as we wanted to. We had to just do the next right and faithful thing. We started by asking you all to pray. And then the next step after that was we got some people who cared about the food pantry still happening. We got them together to start having conversations. 
And then the next thing that happened was we, some of those folks started going out and exploring other food pantries to see how do you organize your food pantry? How do you get volunteers? How do you do this? And we did that. And then we did the next thing of having some folks from here start um, shadowing at the food pantry to see how it all works and having conversations with volunteers. And then we did the next step and we figured out a plan for right now, for this summer, with some thoughts about, okay, how are we gonna keep this sustainable beyond that? And that's how we're not having the food pantry shut down. Is it the ultimate answer? No, but it's the next right and faithful step. And if we keep following that, eventually we will bump in to the outcome that God has in store for us. Magri de Vega writes, our faith is not just demonstrated in the courage to take the next step when it's time. Our faith is stretched in between the steps when we wait, trusting that we are where God has called us. Unsure even of when the next step will be revealed, much less what direction it will lead us. And yes, that's scary. And... All we need to do is the next right faithful step. So will you do that with me? Can you listen for God's voice in the unknown? Can you take that next faithful step when it's time trusting that God has got this? Has got us while we do so? I hope you can, and we will be doing that next step together with God, with each other. We are not alone. For in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen.